Well, more now on Syria and news that UN officials are to join a Syrian government-led humanitarian mission this weekend. Joining us on the line is Nancy Soderberg, who was once served as a U.S. ambassador to the United Nations under President Bill Clinton. Thank you very much for your time on BBC Newsday. What do you make of this mission? Surely the, the fact that it is a government-led mission makes it rather um, difficult to get to the truth, do you think? I do. I think that the Syrian government has been given a, essentially a carte blanche by the international community to slaughter its people. And I think any humanitarian effort that the UN can get is important. It will save lives, but it's not going to uh, solve the underlying problem, which is uh, a diplomatic solution, but one that needs to be backed up uh, by force and troops on the ground to stop the killing. Anything short of that will let the, con the killing continue. It is, it is proving to be so difficult to get this kind of united, uh, united, united nations. What would your advice be to everybody to get them round the table? Well, you cannot let Russia have a veto when lives are at risk like this. And I think you need a coalition of the willing. It needs to be led by the region. That means Turkey and the neighboring Arab countries, and they need to live up to the responsibility to get in and stop the killing. Uh, Assad will not keep stop. It will not continue the killing if there are troops on the ground to create safe havens uh, for the population while the negotiations go on. If anyone can pull a rabbit out of this hat in negotiations, it's Kofi Annan, who's the most talented uh, diplomat the world has. But at this point, the Syrian government is not serious about negotiations. And so what, what do you advise Kofi Annan to do? It seems like, it, well, as you say, it's just such a difficult position. What should his next step be? Well, I think he has to do what he's doing, which is to push the regime to end the violence, immediate humanitarian access, and stop the killing. But Assad is not likely to say yes to him until the world is willing to stand up to him. And so long as the Security Council is divided, the UN is not going to be able to act. That's going to require the regional governments uh, rising to the occasion. They're the ones who are going to have to deal with the refugees. They're the ones who are going to have to deal with the aftermath of the Syrian civil war. And so long as they're willing to stand by and let this happen, it's going to continue to happen. Uh, the U.S. cannot continue to be the port of first call for the use of force. But until the diplomacy is married by force, the killing will continue. Is force something that... Um, it's, it People are saying that you have to be incredibly cautious with Syria. It's such a complicated uh, scenario compared to, say, Libya. In terms of force, what, what would you suggest? I would have a coalition of the willing of the Arabs, neighboring Arab states, um, together with Turkey, uh, to go into Syria and create a safe haven so that you can have um, this, the killing stop, uh, perhaps in some of the cities, certainly in Homs, uh, Babur Amre, and... Uh, the other areas of government's attacks. And I, there's always a risk that the Syrians are willing to take on that force. I think it has to be sufficient so that that will not happen. Uh, it's one thing for the Syrians to slaughter unarmed uh, protesters. It's very different if they were confronted by a strong force that is there simply to protect civilians. Okay, Nancy Soderberg, we uh, very much value your input. Thank you very much for speaking to us.